Hey everyone. Oh my land. This is going to be such a good conversation. You, if you already don't know our guest today, you are going to fall in love with her. She's a fellow Minnesotan, which is so fun for me because we were just chatting before I pushed that record button that like it's, it's usually someone like far away that, you know, can't understand the the pain of living in Minnesota all winter long. Um, But this is so great. I've been following you, Heidi, on social media for like a while. And so it just feels so fun to meet someone that you feel like you know, you know? And so this well, is- I told my husband, this feels like it's a catch up time with a friend and I'm super excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So Heidi Lee Anderson, if you do not know her, you're going to get to know her. You're going to get to know some of her story today. And it's going to be, it's so applicable. It's so applicable. So we're celebrating her new book, P.S. It's yes. going to be good how god's word answers our questions about faith fear and all the things like all the things all love the things. laid it out love how each chapter answers or excuse me answers and asks all the questions that we actually do have as women as christians and we don't really know like who to ask or really even maybe how to answer but you go there so welcome 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 to a wife like me heidi well, I'm super excited to be here, Amanda. Thanks for having me on. Hey, why don't you just introduce yourself for people who aren't already familiar with who you are? Yes. Okay. So like you said, my name is Heidi Lee Anderson. Um, I started off in kids ministry right after graduation. And it was there that I found, man, when you tell Bible stories and it's like the kids eyes widen like saucepans. I was like, this is what I need to be doing. Maybe not necessarily with kids, but I just, I love sharing God's word in a way people actually understand. Um, And it was there that I became a content developer. So I was able to write small group curriculum and daily devotionals. Um, But then I had my son, Oscar, in 2014. And I realized, man, I only get like six short years before he goes off to kindergarten. And I really wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So I put in my two weeks, but I asked my boss, can I take home like the daily devotional part? Because I love writing. And thankfully they said yes. So during nap time and bedtime, I wrote those daily devotionals for another five years. Um, But then the church kind of phased that out. And I came to a crossroads like, man, I love being a stay-at-home mom, but now I miss teaching the word of God. Like I miss doing that in some sort of capacity. I prayed about what should I do? And at the time I had an Instagram account. It was this mother hen. I still have that handle. It's just kind of shifted towards Christian parenting at this point. Um, But at that point, it was like a photo dump zone of my kids. And it was heavily centered around motherhood. And at that point, I just decided, you know, I'm going to flip things around. And now all the devotionals I would have written for my church, I'm just going to post on social media and see where it goes. Um, And it was around, I had about 15,000 followers at the time. And now it's like 120,000, which is just amazing of Christian women. Like I love that community that just gets it. Let's talk about God's word on the gram. Let's share it with anyone who wants to listen. And let's just bring the good news to the ends of the social media world. That's kind of a little bit of my story. I love that. I love that. What I also love is I was curious in all honesty. I was like, I can't wait to read her book because I'm not sure if it's like what the what her voice is going to be like. Okay. If you follow Heidi, you are going <laughs> to love the fact that her book, it, it, you, it's you. It's you. And I love that. It, and, and shout out to your publisher and your editor because yes. they, can I say they have, they have balls? I don't even know. Whatever. They do. Yeah. I have seen <laughs> or whatever, but like yeah. I've seen, I've seen some like publishing houses be like, eh, you know, I don't really know if that's gonna like translate or like resonate yes. with the reader. I'm like, this is you. This is like you. There's, I just love it. I, it was so refreshing to see that. Well, I love that you say that because I will give a shout out to Tyndale because even specifically when we are going through the different titles and we were just hurling out ideas, what would land? And they came to a point where we had, this is going to be good. And I read it and I just sat on it. And it's like, I love, because I want people to know Romans 8, 28. I mean, that's what the book is about, how it's threaded all throughout scripture and also our lives too. So I want that message, but it seems so serious and grammatically correct. And I'm like, (laughs) can we just be like... P.S. It's going to be good. And, and, and thankfully to them, I mean, they've just let me 
voice my voice throughout all the pages. I mean, Danica, my editor, she's amazing. And they just let me even type like gonna instead of going to all throughout the book. So I really just want it to be conversational. So I'm glad you uh, you pointed that out because for sure, kudos to Tyndall for letting them letting me do that. For real, for real. Because it is how we talk. So it's like we're yeah, we and like you and me, but like it's it's how we as women like we'll text yeah. and we'll I mean all the the funny things throughout it. I'm like that's your voice, and it's just I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, um, you're the best. Yeah, well, I, need to, I need to hire you on my PR team. <laughs> I, I need that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I am. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not hired, but I'm happily sharing about this book and this message because again, it's just refreshing and it's it's a you're again a relevant voice for what Christian women need today. So it's just so fun. Um so yeah, so in the book you do I love this quote, you write, the enemy will always hope we'll bow to the way we feel instead of standing on the truth we know. And I know from bits of your story, I know from reading the book that you've had to experience, walk that out yourself. Like, let's dive into that a bit. Share whatever you want. For sure. Yeah. So I, about 10 years ago now, I was, um, I will always sit, remember sitting on that white crickly paper and hearing the doctor tell me I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And with no family history of cancer or really any disease whatsoever. I mean, that was like a sucker punch in the gut. It was like the rug was pulled out from under me and it was like, where is God and what is even happening right now? Um, and like, even fast forward today, like someone had asked me, how have you overcome fear? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. not past tense. Like keyword yes. is like, I am overcoming. I am still in the battle and in the thick of things. And, and here's an example of how this plays out. Like about a month ago, I felt a lump in my breast. So with my past history of cancer, especially radiation to the chest, the doctor told me about a decade ago that breast cancer is a really common second cancer and it could come in my early thirties, which I mean, now being 34, it hits a little too close to home. So when I felt that bump, I mean, my initial instinct was to panic. Like, what is this? Is this a tumor? And what if it's cancer? And they say by the time it becomes a lump, like it's later stage. So what if it's too late? What if I caught it too late and it's now like spread? I'm stage four. I'm going to die and leave my kids motherless, like at these young ages. And that is how the enemy will hope you bow to the way you feel. Mm -hmm. um, but I have Philippians 4, 8 on my wall. And, and it says, whatever is true, that's the first part of the verse, think on such things. And so in the downward spiral of like all the what if questions and, and worst case scenarios, like I had to pause and ask myself, what is true? Because my God doesn't ask me to think on what could be true, but what is true? And what do I know to be true today? Well. I know that I only feel something and it could very well be a tendon or a cyst or even just like dense tissue. I have not been told by a test result or a doctor that it's cancer. So I don't even need to go down that path right now because that's not true in my life present day. What I do know to be true is like it says in Psalm 121, that God watches over my life. He watches my coming and going forevermore. And like it says in Psalm 91, he commands his angels concerning us to guard us in all our ways. So I know no matter what the enemy or this world tries to hurl my way, I mean, God will indeed use it for my good and his glory. Like it says in Romans 8, 28. And then finally, I always cling to the fact that he's my good shepherd. He's faithfully leading me on like Psalm 23 and John 10. So that's where I have a choice. That's where we have a choice. That's where we can bow to the way we feel, or we can in turn stand on the truth that we know. Mm. Does that make sense? <clears throat> it so does. And I, you know, I'm, I'm hearing you talk and I'm thinking of the opening in chapter nine. I was like <laughs> dying. <laughs> I just love how you lay it out and, and you literally kind of like summarized a, a bit of like the mental game that we go through. And oh my so goodness. it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. I, I relate to you. I, I, laugh. I know. I know. It's I know. You gotta cry sometimes, you know, so you just got to laugh. You yeah. got to. You know, like literally it's, there's something different about like reading your own thought trail of like, you yeah. know what? I, just like that one little thing, even like your, your, your child has a cough and then you go on to, you know, whatever. And you're like, 
it could be that he has childhood diabetes and <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and then that, oh, yeah. And so on and so on and so on. And so, but it's real. Like that's the thing I've had melanoma three times and I now thankfully they've caught it early every single time. And I go in every right. six months and yeah. Right. But it's like that we're lying if we say that we don't get in that headspace sometimes of like the what ifs and it's just it's a it's a waste of our energy and our time and like you say we what we what do we know to be true today it might be very hard things you know like it might be that you have received a diagnosis of something or that you did get that phone call or that they did leave or that whatever but and and like yeah and you can stand on truth still, like in that place. And that truth trumps everything. And that yeah. is where we can experience that peace amidst whatever we're going on or whatever is going on around us or within us. But um, it's it's like the very real thing. And we do have a choice. As hard as that is to like, you know, like wrestle with, it's like we do in those moments. Um and that's like a muscle, I feel like, that many, for many years, I had not even like considered growing or building. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we do, though, get to experience the fruit of what happens when we do choose a different pathway. And, you know, not the one of fear of this mental game of crazy, but really, yeah. I am going to go to God's word. I am going to stand on that. And I'm going to ruminate my mind and meditate on that. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I just love that. Um, well, and like you said, I mean, chapter nine, for those that don't know it, that's about Caleb. We dive into his footsteps, follow his footsteps. And he asks it, the chapter poses the question, whose voice is, am I going to listen to? Like we just talked about. And when you look, I mean, when you look at the Israelites in Numbers 14, when they were the scouting mission, when the scouts were being sent into this promise in the land ahead and they came back, what do we notice in the scouting report? Well, in the majority, not once did they mention God. Not once did they consider what God had to say about their plight. Like not once do we read they mentioned his presence, his power, or his promises. But if you skim through Caleb's account, he actually compares everything to God. He's, he knew the facts. He knew the giants were bigger. He knew the walls were really tall, but he always compared what he was talking about, what God had said, or what God can do, or how God has assured us of his promise his presence. And we can do the same. I mean, when we're facing these really hard and scary things, we understand the facts, but we also know who our God is. And I think it's, it's important when we actually compare our situation to our God and his promises. Mm, Yes. Truth. Hello. Preach. Okay. So (laughs) I love that. I also do, I'm just going to keep putting in plugs. So you guys, you have to go pre-order the book right now. It's officially being birthed into the world April 4th. Um, P.S. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good. So if you're listening on the podcast, it's linked in the show notes, how God's word answers our questions about faith, fear, and all the things. What I also love, it's not like one, again, not one, just one thing. It's like, no, we're going to hit on all these different things. And one of the one of the chapters I loved also is, I mean, I love them all, but is the comparison game of like, she, but she's more qualified. She is more equipped in my mind, we think like, but she, and man, you name it, like, oh, I mean, I next Sunday I'm preaching and every single time they know way more scripture than I do. Like they know the Bible way better than I do. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter what the scenario is. Other people are way more qualified to do this than I am. doesn't matter what it is. Be a mom, make a, like a batch of cookies, whatever. Someone can do it way better. And so how can we, like, well, let's touch on that. How can we actually, like, rid ourselves from that, from just our self, like, limitations and believe God for whatever it is he's called us to? Yes. No, totally. And, and you nailed it. I mean, because the truth of the matter is, that may all be true. Like someone else 
it may be and is more equipped than you. And we all do have limitations so you, yeah. for sure that, but this is why I love Gideon's story and Judges 6 and why I dedicate a whole chapter to it as well. Because when God sent an angel to tell him to go fight the Midianites, I mean, these Midianites were so oppressive to the Israelites that whatever crops they tried planting, I mean, these punks would come up from the East and just like seize it all. They would camp on the land. They ruined the crops. It said they didn't spare a living thing for Israel. Yet here in this passage, we see the angel tell Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. <laughs> and it's almost like you can see Gideon looking around, like his eyebrows are raised, trying to hold back a grunt, like, because he replies, pardon me? I mean, he's confused to say the least. Like, I'm not mighty. He says, my clan is the weakest in the whole area. And me in particular, I mean, I am the least in my, in my family. It's common knowledge. Like I know it, they know it. It's true. So like, how do you not know it? Angel. Of yeah. the Lord. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's not, again, it's not like we meet Gideon on the front lines with face painted battle ready. This guy was hiding out. He was not wanting to face the Midianites. And this is where the angel deems him mighty warrior. And here's the two things I love about Gideon's story that we can take away from it whenever we fall into the comparison trap or anything like that. It's like when the angel deemed him mighty warrior, just like him, we can indeed focus on others strengths and our own limitations. I mean, they're bigger and be better. I'm I'm weaker and smaller. That's always an option. But one, while Gideon saw himself as the weakest and the lowest, God called him mighty and warrior. And this shows us we are not who we think we are. Like we might think we have a good picture, but we are always who God says we are. And so when, when we voice inadequacy, even in our own minds, I mean, as our creator who knows us better than we know ourselves, it changes the game when we actually believe who God declares us to be. And that's his ambassadors. It's his light of the world. It's his chosen people. Um, but the second thing I love too, it's really less about us and more about God. Like in response to Gideon's fear, I love in verse 14 where it says, then the angel, the Lord Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. And sometimes we just got to go in the strength that we have because it's God who is sending us. Even when we are smaller than the Midianites, even when we are less equipped for the battle, it does not matter when the hand of God is over our life and he's telling us to move. So at the end of the day, I mean, perspective matters. Will we focus on ourselves or will we focus on God? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just so needed for us to remember, we have no idea the whole, like what God is doing. So like, can we trust that the small thing or the, you know, I have a friend who uh, is disabled, but she says, I can pray. I can lay here and I can pray. And, and most of her life is spent in a hospital bed. And, but she said, but I can pray. And, you know, we would think, well, she's not able to go out and I don't know, X, Y, Z, but God has placed her there and she knows I can pray. And so can we trust the Lord that whatever situation we find ourselves in and whatever we lack or the little we have, he's going to do whatever he wants to do with that thing. I think it's yeah. like a question of obedience, isn't it? It's like, I think so. I see this, right? That we can be become paralyzed by the little or lack we have. And yet God's like, can you just, <laughs> like, I've given you what, what you need enough for you. I've empowered you, equipped you whatever your own personality, giftings, talents, all the things are or are not, I'm asking you to whatever, like show up, call, text, you know, make that, lead that, right. whatever, go to the workplace, blah, 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 like whatever. Can you just, will you trust me with that? As small yeah. as it seems and, or, and, and as, as, as not well as it seems to have gone. Um, yeah. And I love that. It's another chapter of yours. Like, what if it, <laughs> I love that. What if it all like goes up in flames? Like what if yeah. all of this kind of like doesn't go well, you know, or like, I just like, but what if it, what if it fails or what, you know, and it's just like, yeah, then what? And so I don't know, why don't you just speak into that a little bit too? 
Well, for sure, because that's the reality of our life, right? That we're going to face failures of some sort. We're going to face even consequences from sin. We live in a decaying world. So at some point, I mean, stuff is going to go all up in flames. And I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's story because they were faithful to their God. And for a while, it seemed like things were going their way. I mean, they were raised to these appointed positions in government and they... They were lavish with all the king's food and and all these gifts and and things like that. But when they stayed faithful to their God and it rubbed the king the wrong way, what happened? Well, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But what I love about this passage and what I go into so much more in detail in my book is that three men went into that fire, but three men came out. It was only in the fire when the king could see Jesus. And I realize as easy as it is to sing God's praises after the answered prayer, what if the call is actually to hold fast in faith before it comes? Like wait expectantly for our savior to save even when the flames are hot around our marriage, our finances, or health. Like ultimately, what if we're called like in John 9 with the blind man, when the disciples ask, why was this man born blind? Was it his parents' sins or his own sins? But God said, Jesus said, no, it's so that the son of man could be glorified in him. And, and maybe that's the call that when we put God on display through the blaze, that those watching would actually see him. And I think that's what, that's the call when it all goes up in flames. We want to focus on ourselves. It feels really bad. We want God to fix it and clear it up so we can be done with this. But what if God has something in store for those watching, like the king? And I love how in the end, King Nebuchadnezzar, he leapt up and and he said at the very end, there is no other God who can rescue like that. And maybe that was the whole point all along, that God has something in store. He will redeem everything. And when he does, maybe we'll be bringing more people to the kingdom because of our obedience. Yes. Yes. And it's just like, is the goal to avoid the fire? Is the goal to get out of the fire? Or is the goal to really seek all of him and experience all of him and then just put him on display, leak him and whatever. Like that is when like that changes our perspective on our situation, whatever that looks like. And uh, it should, it should be or feel maybe exciting, even if it's hard, right? Like, because we can trust that that's what he's going to do there. And that can be beautiful too. And so that's, that's just so good. So, so good. Yeah. I love somewhere in the psalm where it says, like, I have never seen the righteous abandoned. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I love that because we can declare that truth still today that we serve a faithful God. So even when we're thrown into the fire, I mean, like Isaiah said, it will not consume us. Like we won't be blazed by the flames. And I think in the fire, we can cling to that promise that even when it feels bad and looks bad, man, we have a God who's going to flip it and he's with us today. He's going to redeem it. It's going to be good. Going to be good. P.S. It's going to be good. Uh, <laughs> okay, here's a here's a different question for you, Heidi. Um, what would you say is like your, or it doesn't have to be one, but like best piece of marriage advice? What have you learned? Uh, okay, your marriage okay I am. Yeah, no, I am. I am not a marriage expert by any means, but I will say. I always think of that that saying where it says treat others the way you want to be treated. And I mean, I think in marriage, it, it goes a little bit beyond that, where in marriage, we need to treat them the way they want to be treated. Like just because our love language is words of affirmation, man, that may not be our husbands. And we can be lathering on the praise all day. And they might be like, um, my language, love language is gifts. Like, can you just give me something, you know? And we, we kind of fail to do that at times when we're like, well, this is what I want and how I dish it out. And I think, I think that would be probably the, the marriage advice that I was given and that I keep in mind most is that what, how can I serve my, my spouse? How can I love Tyler the way that he feels most loved? Um, it goes beyond just treating them right the way that we would want to be treated. We we should dish out as much patience and grace as we wish we would have, but then also we should love them in a way where they want to be loved. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. That's so good. That's so good. Cause it's like so easy to not do that. 
<laughs> I know it. I know it. And it's funny because I am like the lowest on physical touch. It's like a zero on the scale for me. So it's like, okay, yeah, let's hug. <laughs> like, okay, I will do this because I love you, not because I love it, you know. Yes, yes, yes. How <laughs> How does Tyler support you like throughout all that God has called you to do? Oh man, he's, he's just the best. He's my number one, but I I will always say Tyler has faith. Like only Bible heroes do his spiritual gift is faith. And so he has no problems believing in God and his promises. Whereas I really have to work at it. I have to be intentional. I have to pray around the clock because it is very hard. My knee jerk reaction isn't just, Oh, surely the Lord is in this place and I will submit and believe, you know? And so, So Tyler, how he is just the best for me is that in my moments of doubt, even personally, when I'm battling against fear health wise, or even just on social media or with this book, and I voice them to him, man, he is the one that's declaring God's promises for me. He's reminding me of God's character. And he's telling me, you know, we, we don't have, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So we're, we're not going to listen to that spirit. We're going to, we're going to pray and we're going to believe what Jesus has for us and who he is. And so hands down, I mean, Tyler does a whole lot. My, my parents and my friends, they will all say, man, your husband does like way more things with like kids doing baths. I mean, he's, he does a lot like doing the lunches, getting cereal, like practically speaking, Ty shows up and does a lot of stuff, our laundry, bathroom, all the things. But by far my number one thing that I so appreciate is that he is a strong man of God and he really calls me to be a strong woman of God. And I'm so grateful for that. Yes, that's so good. I think it's so cool to see, you know, oftentimes like in ministry, you'll see a couple doing things together. And it's a question that I get frequently, obviously, because what with me is more uh, of a marriage ministry, specifically for wives. But, you know, I do think there's such a beautiful thing. And I was just at a class last week where someone said, oh, so your husband isn't, isn't here with you? And I said, no. I said... <laughs> Not that he can't be, he could totally be here, right? But you know, he, 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 like part of our, what our marriage looks like is he really is supportive of what, what the Lord has asked me to do and step out in these different ways. And I just think that's beautiful that, I mean, I do see him in some of your social media posts, but really it's, oh, yeah. it's just a beautiful thing. You know, it just kind of reminds me of like Mary and Joseph and Joseph's like, just yeah. support what the, what the Lord has asked of Mary, you know? And so anyway, I just saw that. Um, yes. what is your, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Go ahead. What, it, what would you say for, again, PS, it's going to be good. It's available. Go get it right now. What yeah. would you say is your like number one hope for whoever reads the book? Yeah. Well, the whole reason why I show up on social media, the whole reason why I wrote this book is I realized today there are women that have been told bad news of some variety. Like I, like it was for me 10 years ago, maybe it's a cancer diagnosis, but maybe it's a miscarriage or news of a divorce or separation, or maybe a debt that they just do not have the means to pay for. And I really know what it's like to sit in the middle when you aren't to the end yet. You don't see the good ending. You can't see how God is redemptive and good in this situation. And really my hope is that when we follow behind these Bible stories and these Bible heroes, we would recognize when we see sit in the middle of their stories too, that that same fear and stress and overwhelm that we feel was also felt by them too. But when we watch how God has moved and what God has said and what he promises, well, that not only ended their story in a good way, but his promises still are sovereign over our lives too. And that we can hang on in the middle of our stories, knowing that Romans 8.28 is a sure promise from the living God. And he will use all things, not just some things or the little things or one or two big things, but he will use all things for our good and his glory. That is just the goodness of our God. And so I We'll hope that by the end of the book, or just even on following me on social media, that you would be reminded of that promise that your God is going to come through. So you just got to hang on because so- someday you will see Romans 8 28 play out. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but someday you will. So keep hanging on. Hello. Yes, ladies. Like, thank you. <laughs> um, 
so, so good. Thank you, Heidi. Again, yeah, head over to her social media and it's, it is this mother hen or Heidi Lee Anderson, or we can find you either. Or how does that work? Yes. Heidi Lee Anderson is my main account, but I do have this mother hen for parenting. Yeah. And I'm on YouTube too. I just shared my full testimony there. Um, and I also do a lot of like, I have a Bible study that you can find all on my website, thismotherhen.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Would you mind praying over all the wives? Oh, I would love to. Thank you. Dear Father, thank you so much that you are a good God and that we, whenever we draw near to you, it says in James that you draw near to us. So everyone today that is drawing near to you, Lord, I pray that you would prove yourself strong on their behalf, that whatever they come to you, weary, tired, um, just heavy burden that you would indeed trade that for rest. And we would walk away feeling free in the peace that transcends all understanding that only you give. Thank you so much for your word that it leads us and that we can seize the free abundant life in Christ by realizing and living in and taking you up on your word. We love you so much. It's in Jesus's powerful name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, everyone, for being with us again. P.S. It's going to be good. It's linked in the show notes. Heidi's linked in the show notes. She is also available to speak, to come to your community, encourage you and your people. So just get in touch with her, follow her, and get the book for you and your people. So thanks for being with us. And um, I'm sure we will chat again, Heidi. Oh, I would love it. Thanks for having me, Amanda. This was so much fun. Thank you. Bye, everyone.